Welcome to today's video. I am so excited. As you can tell from the title, I am doing a full book collection, bookshelf tour, home library. I don't really know what to call it, but I wanna show you all of the books that I own and how I store them, organize them, display them. There's a ton of books in here. I actually have no idea how many I own. I'm guessing hundreds, if not thousands. There is something really special to me about tangibly holding a physical copy of a book and then if I'm attached to it or feel a certain way keeping it. You will also see a small collection of first edition books or really, really old books. I am always trying to own the oldest book that I can find. But if you are new here, welcome to my home. This can also double as a quick little home tour. I'll show you around. I bought this place about two and a half years ago. It's a four bedroom, four bath, and I've done a ton of renovations on it. I basically gutted the whole thing, put in new floors, bathroom, kitchen, everything. So if you like renovation, transformation, before and after process videos, I will link that playlist up above and down below if you are interested. But we are currently in my living room, which kind of doubles as like an entryway. I really love the layout of this place, so I'm excited to show you around. Let's get started. I am currently getting into booktube and making a ton of book content. So I just posted a full TBR video on all of the physical books on my TBR list, as well as a quick little like book tag just to introduce myself to the booktube community, a little bit about me and my reading preferences. And today we are doing a full book library tour collection. I'm really excited to take you around my home and show you how I organize and display my books. Before we get started, definitely hit subscribe. I do also have a book Instagram that I started up called Booking It With Max, so definitely go give that a follow. Or if you're not that into book content, but you're just curious and wanna be here, I appreciate you watching and definitely follow my main Instagram, mckk17, for more lifestyle stuff. But with all that being said, let's get right on into the book tour. I bet Marnie and Luna are gonna be my little helpers. Starting the tour right in the front door of my home, we have my entryway. Now, I don't have a lot of books right in the entryway of my home, but I do have a couple right underneath this entry table as well as this black console. This is mostly like poetry, books from my childhood, a couple of old books, but mostly books that I've kept for a long time. So down here, right on this entryway table, I honestly just didn't know where to put these, but I have The Art of Alfred Hitchcock. This was from my film class in school. That's the other thing about me. I very rarely get rid of books for school because I find them still valuable and I spent a lot of money for the class. And then I also have The Art of a Short Story from high school. I'm sure we are all very familiar with a textbook just like this. They live here. I'm a huge writer, I'm a published writer, and I have my degrees in English and creative writing and English was always my favorite subject. So because of that, I've always held on to books for English class and more of like the classic modern literature taste just because I like that stuff. Like I mentioned, right in the entryway here, I've got some more piles of books. Poetry was my main focus in college. It's what I did like my thesis project on, but it's also a very strong skill of mine and poetry was always my favorite genre as like an angsty, sad teen. So I have a lot of poetry collections up here. Most of these are collections of poetry that I needed for class in college. Some of them are not though, like Dark Sparkler by Amber Tamblin. This is the actress who played Tilly in The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, so I really wanted to read that. Most of the other ones, though, I believe were for college. And then just some classics. Down here behind Marnie, I have a lot of these old Marnie. I have a lot of these old comic books from childhood. They just kind of, again, by default, ended up here. I just didn't know where else to put them, but I think they work. I love them all so much. A lot of Heathcliff, Charlie Brown. I think most of these are Family Circus, but these are all like little comic books that I read in my childhood. Some of them were my mom's, I believe, when she was little. Like I got a lot of these at my grandma's house, but if you were from the 80s or 90s, you will probably recognize these little books. Anyone younger than that probably has no idea what these are, but yeah, these were published in the 80s. So 
a lot of them were my mom's, but I'm really glad that my grandma held on to them and then I started to hold on to them and now I have all of these old books. I used to read these before bed when I was like eight years old. Speaking of old books, I have some of the old books down here. More of them are up there and we'll get to them. Like I mentioned, I really value and collect older books. I'm always looking for like the oldest book that I can own. I think the oldest one I have right now is from like the 18... 50s, which is insane to me. Now a couple of them are down here. So we have more of these like soft cover old children's books. What's really cool about this edition of Huckleberry Finn is that it's so old. It doesn't even say Mark Twain, which is like his writing pen name. It says Samuel L. Clemens, which is the real name of Mark Twain. Isn't that insane? I'm not like the biggest supporter of Huckleberry Finn. I understand the problems with this book. This is definitely a very, very old edition. But just the fact that it doesn't even say Mark Twain holds value to me. Other than that, I have this beautiful collection of stories by John Steinbeck. Look at this dark green binding. These two books are such treasures to me. We have the new world compared to the old, which just the concept of a book about the old world is insane. And then this evangelical magazine from 1841. What's really, really cool about this book is that there's actually an inscription on the inside dated October 18th, 1854, presented to Miss Elizabeth Patchell on her leaving England for America as a small token of respect from her uncle. Isn't that insane? Written in 1854 as she was leaving for America. Like this is somebody's ancestry. So this is literally somebody's bloodline. Can you smell it, Marnie? Tell us about the history. <laughs> it would be so crazy to like find the family and be able to give this to them. Like this is from her uncle when she came over to America. Oh my God. Really, really cool books down here. And then these are some poetry books from my childhood. I grew up with my mom reading Shel Silverstein to me a lot before bed. So I have some of my Shel Silverstein poetry books. I wonder if this generation of children would like Shel Silverstein because I loved these growing up. Yeah, I guess I grew up reading a lot of poetry, which makes sense as to why I became such a big poetry reader and actually studied it in college. Randomly, I have an old, beautiful copy of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory here as well, which was so fun. I really love finding old, beautiful versions of like children's books. The only other books in my entryway though are a couple that I have right here on the sewing machine, which fun fact, this is my great great grandmother's sewing machine and it has been passed down to the woman in my family ever since. So my mother gave it to me, my grandmother had it before her, her mother-in-law had it, and then her mother-in-law's mother was the owner of this. So my great great grandmother's baby clothes were sewn on this. I think it's so cool. I love history and speaking of history, like that. I put a couple of history books here. So I have a World Atlas book, a history on Minneapolis, which I love. I think I showed this in a vlog when I found this at a antique store. I love learning about history, especially local history when I feel connected to it. And I learned a lot about how the city that I am from and raised in came to be, which was really cool. And then I also have a Minnesota walk book, which is interesting, kind of takes you through like all the hiking places here in Minnesota. And some of them I like grew up going to a lot. So that was cool. Like Wood Lake Nature Center is in here. And that was really close to my childhood home. Eloise, the bird sanctuary, that was close to my high school. So I love feeling connected to stuff like this. Moving on to the fun stuff, I have so many more books, especially fiction books and more books that I've recently read in my living room. The piles just get bigger and bigger as I read more books. So come on in and I'll show you some of my favorite reads. Bookshelf. It's from Ikea. I have a, a lot of books here, including 
all of the older classics or earlier editions that I collect and want to really highlight and show off. Plus, these are just really, really beautiful books. This is also where I keep a lot of my hardcovers as well. Hardcovers are a lot harder for me to store just because, you know, paperbacks look really great together on a shelf, but hardcovers, they're different sizes. So most of my hardcovers live here. You will notice I own a lot of copies of Alice in Wonderland. That is one of my all-time favorite books. I feel like the concept of collecting them originated from when I was about 10 years old in Florida and we were at a bookstore near the airport on a family vacation and I saw the most beautiful, beautiful book of Alice in Wonderland. It was probably very expensive and my mom did not buy it for me and I spent the rest of my childhood looking for that version of Alice in Wonderland and I've never been able to find it, but I feel like since then I have just been wanting to collect versions of that book. I also studied it in college, which was a really cool kind of way to analyze a favorite story of mine. And I learned a lot about Lewis Carroll, the inspiration behind Alice and how he basically writes literature versions of logic equations and how every single character in Alice could be a mental illness representation. I really, really love Lewis Carroll's writing and it just makes your brain think. I would recommend pretty much everything on this list and then as I read more hardcovers, I'm just going to add them to this side until it hits the plant probably. I guess down here on the lower shelf, I have some bigger coffee table art books. These are all of my art books. The one art history book on top is from my high school AP art history class, but the rest, well, this one's from my grandma because she was an artist, but the rest are just my own taking from like our antique stores. I love Georgia O'Keeffe. She's one of my favorites. But I also have some more up. So if we jump up to the top, I have um, Mary Cassatt, which is another American Impressionism artist that I love. I have a New York book up here because in high school I was obsessed with New York. And then again, Alice in Wonderland. I also have some more classics tucked up here because I didn't know where else to put them. Olivia by Dorothea Strachey up here. Frankenstein, which I love. And then I believe these are just like more publishing books. I really didn't know where to put them. Like I have so many. Tina Fey's Bossy Pants and then Wicked is up there. And then as I've mentioned, this is where a lot of my collecting older books is stored. So I love this Grimm's Complete Works of Fairy Tales book. It is beautiful. So, so, so stunning. I love it so much. I've read everything up here. We've got this old edition of Black Beauty. We have this beautiful Virginia Woolf copy of Flush, which is such a cute book on a Cocker Spaniel, I believe. Flush is the name of a dog. It's really cute, highly recommend. Beautiful, beautiful blue version of Pollyanna. I believe this is a first edition Little Men by Louisa Alcott. Another collection of John Steinbeck's Emily Bronte, Wuthering Heights. I think I think this is also a first edition and then some super 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 old books and then this is actually somebody's like forum book and calculator and wages are stored in here i think this is so cool to look back on because i mean it's literally like cents that people would get paid in like five cents 0 0.7 0 0.5 cents so that's really cool. I believe this is from 1888. So it's a form book and wages calculator from the 1880s. I really don't know where else to put it, but it fits perfectly right here. And then some more like classics in my head, some books that I've had pretty much my whole childhood really. Anna Karenina, East of Eden, Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, Wuthering Heights. I own three copies of Wuthering Heights. Pride and Prejudice, all of the Barnes and Noble classics collection that I own are here. Here. Most recently, I've added The Raven. I was definitely the fall of the House of Usher influenced, so I was reading them to catch up on my Poe work. The last books on this bookshelf, I've got some more spiritual, witchy, and then plant books. I would love to reorganize this. It looks not how I want it to look, but it's overwhelming to figure it out. So I've got the Plantopedia down here, which I do use. I haven't in a while based on how I'm storing it, but I would recommend this to any plant owner and it's a really nice coffee table to own. But again, I don't really like coffee table books unless you also read them. So I highly recommend reading them. I got these two books from Earthbound. We have Superstitions, which I've read both of these books and then the Book of Altars and Sacred Spaces. So if you want more information on how to make a sacred space, 
place or an altar. That book is really helpful. The superstitions book is really fun as well. I learned a lot of like different myths and superstitions and things that I grew up kind of hearing about. They're in here and they give you a lot of history on it. These books, we have Writing Down the Bones. I've read this book. I think every writer should read this book. I have Poems of New York, a collection of poems about New York. So it's by a lot of different poets. During my I'm gonna move to New York phase, I was really obsessed with that. And then, big shocker here, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. This edition is also super cool. I love the gold and the beautiful original illustrations in here, the floral. I didn't know where to put Tuesdays with Maury and the five people you meet in heaven, so they're here. And then I have two more books on New York down here as well. Those are all the books on this bookcase. I've got some more books down there. And then the fireplace, I'm really excited to talk about the books up there on the mantle and then a few more books down there and a couple books up there as well. Starting down here, these are all very spiritual minus the wicked. So actually, I just got this in the spring, so I'll kind of show you a little bit, but it's like this beautiful big book documenting the original musical on Broadway. Rehearsals and scripts and kind of how it came to be. So if you are a Broadway geek like I am, or if you love Wicked, I mean, Wicked is what got me into musicals back as a kid. I love Adina Menzel. Like everything is in here. You would eat this up for sure. So it just kind of fits with the more spiritual witchy books, which is why it's there. I've talked about this book before, The Tarot Companion. If you want to read tarot or are looking to expand your knowledge on readings, highly recommend this book. It just goes so in depth. The Witch of the Woods, this one was so good. I read this last January. It is a recent release. A lot of good witchy information in here and the style, cover, red accents. It's just super fun. I learned, I learned a lot in there. And then, of course, Esoterica Tarot. I love this series. They have so many cool books. This is the one on tarot cards and the illustrations included. It's kind of like a collection of tarot illustrations and then, of course, information on it. Look at like so many different styles for the lover's card. Really, really beautiful. It's kind of like an art book. I love that one as well. So these are the books that are just down here. Moving to the fireplace mantle, I've got some more kind of like smaller classics here. Any book that's like this mini size, I've just put here. And I try to really incorporate books and crystals into my decor in a way where I'm highlighting the books, but able to like put things around it that just kind of make it feel whole. And adding plants next to it, also helps a ton. A lot of classics here. Some that stick out to me would be I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I love Maya Angelou. Dracula as well. A lot of these are from high school, but I did also read them for fun. And then The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, I highly, highly recommend. The rest are more classics, but I would still recommend them. I really enjoyed The Pearl and Frankenstein and The Metamorphosis. And then up here, I have a lot more just like fiction, more recent books. I guess they're kind of inter twined with some high school books as well, but I don't know. I feel like they just work well here. So I'm gonna move my little meditating kitty. I got this as a gift from my parents when they went to Seattle for um, my grandfather's funeral. I know I get questions about where it's from. I really don't know. They were in like a shop in Seattle and saw it and obviously thought of me. You could definitely image search it. Here, I'll let you screenshot it right now. <laughs> My best friend in high school, her mom gave me The Power of One. I believe she wrote a note on the inside. She said this was like one of her favorite books growing up. And then I think my aunt got me The Fountainhead as well. These are from high school, as you can tell. Hamlet, King Lear. Again, Alice in Wonderland. These two were for my college class. I think I've mentioned that I was in a children's lit class. So these um, Norton versions of them are, were for college, but Alice in Wonderland, Anne of Green Gables. I've got some more fiction work here. Obviously the best book of all time has to be on top. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, obsessed. Everything else here was for high school, except Sweet Bitter. If you've ever worked in a restaurant, you have to read this book. You will relate so hard. I've got some more classics over here, but I would still recommend, I think, all of them. And then some hard covers. It's just so hard to like store hard covers with your soft covers, but Alice Siebold, I would recommend. These are the three works by her. Oh, Driving with Dead People. This was such a good memoir. Loved it so much. The style of writing, like her voice in this was amazing. And then Jeanette Walls. I think I have a couple copies of The Glass Castle, but this is one of my favorite books of all time as well. And then Room was pretty good too. But these books, I have 
have them shown like this. I'm not really hiding them. I don't know. It's just to fit on the fireplace, they have to go like this. So this is Why We Broke Up by Lemony Snicket. I've got Jillian Flynn's um, Dark Places and Sharp Objects here. Half Broke Horses, which is also written by Jeanette Walls. Sorry to disturb the peace. The Haunting of Hill House. Oh my god, please read this. It's so good. If you went through a Hill House obsession, you will love what it is based off of. Peter Pan, when Katie met Cassidy, and the maid. Where the crawdads sing, Charlie St. Cloud. Those are all of the books on the fireplace. The kitties are taking a little rug nap. I have a lot of piano books. I won't go through them, but this is where I keep all of my piano books. And they're all Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. I own every single one, but it's so fun to play. The only other two books I have are tucked into this corner and they are on plants. I believe these were both from Target as well. It's just how to raise a plant and then new plant parent information on plants. They work really well, especially if you have said plants. The other books in my living room are from the children children's classics collection. I've gotten all of these antiquing. We have Robin Crusoe, Treasure Island, and guess what? Alice in Wonderland. I think I covered every single book in the living room. Moving on to the dining room and the sunroom. Welcome to my little dining room. I just did a full makeover on this space a couple of months ago, almost a year ago at this point, I guess, but I'll link that video above and down below if you wanna see what this looked like before. And then if you want any information on like where items are from, it'll be in that video, but I love utilizing spaces to their full potential. And I feel like this dining room is finally living its best full potential life. And I do have a couple of books tucked in here. Most of them do have to do with cooking, but that is because we're in the dining room. On this credenza side table, I love utilizing this two-tier shel exposed shelving. It's so nice. So I have Tequila Mockingbird, which are different cocktail drinks named after classic literature, which is fun. Herbalism, a little book on herbs and how to utilize it. I got this in San Diego last summer. And then over here, I feel like these books go really well together. The one that I still have to read is Eastern Body, Western Mind. This is actually a recommendation from my therapist. Her book recommendations usually always hit with me, so I'm really excited to read that. Got my charged moon water here. And then over here, I've got some cookbooks, recipe books. Up here, I've got three books as well. Small Damages was really cute. It's about a teenage girl who gets pregnant and then goes down to Mexico, I believe, to leave the baby with somebody. It's like a secret, go have the baby, give it to somebody, and then come back story. It's really sad. Lauren Graham's Maya Angelou. I actually love Mom and Me and Mom. It was so good. But a little tip for organizing books and kind of rules of decor is decorate in rules of three. It it works really well. I'm definitely like cluttery, so it's more than that, but three books together, three books together. That's what the interior designers would tell you to do. <laughs> if you watch my recent reading vlog, I showed you some books that my friend who works in publishing got me. I don't know where to put them all yet and I want to read them before I put them on a shelf. That's also a rule that I have. Like I have to read a book before I can put it somewhere. But these are some books that she gave me that I'm really excited to read. Moving on now to the final room on the main level that has some books, the sun room. This is such a beautiful, warm and cozy space that I love to read in on my day bed. It faces my outdoor balcony. There's a nice woodsy forest behind my place as well, so I get a lot of natural wildlife. This is such a great space to read, edit, relax in. The one thing I will mention when it comes to reading on the day bed in here is that you are at a high risk of falling asleep because you're on literally a twin size mattress and you're all snuggled up reading. I usually end up accidentally taking a nap in here especially when like that afternoon sun is hitting. This room gets really toasty, especially with golden hour. It's just so 
so much natural light definitely sold the place for me when I first saw it I don't have a lot of books in here because like I just mentioned there's so much sunlight I don't want to damage the hardcover the binding the books that I have kept in here I've noticed have faded from the sunlight not a lot are in here but there are some books in here I want to show you I have this little pile of books that I either was in the middle of reading or want to read or don't know where else to put and feel like they fit well in here things are what you make of them this one is just like a really short and sweet little book like this I DNF'd Reasons to Stay Alive. I'm halfway through it. It just was not hitting. I don't know. I do want to finish it. You Are the Universe. I really want to read this. I love this author. And then Awaken to the Fifth Dimension as well. These two are still on my TBR list, I guess, but they just ended up in here. The other two books I have are on this shelf up here. It is my Crystal Bible and Birds of Minnesota because I get a lot of birds in here. Now, of course, when I'm filming, there's not a single bird in sight, but there usually are a ton. <laughs> that is every single book on the main level of my house, but I have a ton more upstairs in my office, yoga and wellness room, and of course, in my bedroom. That's where like the best books I think are. I say we start in the office, wellness room, and then my bedroom, but welcome to my upstairs. Starting in my office. I just did a deep cleaning video on this room. So if you like deep cleaning before and after, kind of like satisfying vlogs, definitely check that out. I rearranged some things, moved the desk around, and now I'm actually using this a lot. And this is where I'm probably editing this video. I am. <laughs> I don't have too many books in here, but the books that I do have in my office have to do with work, self-improvement, being your own boss, anything that I think relates to what I do as a profession is in here. This little pile up here are actually the works that I'm published in. All of Jen Sincero's You Are a Badass books are here. Highly, highly recommend if you have not read those, those changed my life. To Hell with the Hustle, Badass Habits, anything that helps with work ethic, big magic. And then this is where I keep all of the YouTuber books. You know, gotta support other creators here. I've got Jen McAllister's really professional internet person, Katie Norton, Connor Franta, Lucy's Girl Heart Girl, So Much I Want to Tell You by Anna Kana. Yeah, all of the YouTuber books I keep in here because it just seems fitting and I do want to support other creators as best as I can. That's really it for books in my office, but anything that has to do with YouTube or hustling and working is here. Moving on to the wellness room. Welcome to my wellness room. This is where I practice yoga, meditation, anything that has to do with spirituality, manifesting, spell work, divination work, anything like that I like to keep in my wellness room. So you will find a lot of books on spells, manifesting, as well as like meditating journals or anything that I want to utilize spiritually to build my mindfulness is in here. So let's get started. The majority of those books are kept on this little West Elm bookcase but I do have a couple up here on this shelf. Literally just a couple. I've got the Four Agreements and the Fifth Agreement here. If you have not read these books, I highly recommend. They kind of go over four basic like beliefs or mindsets that will alter your whole life. And then the Fifth Agreement on like a fifth thing to keep in mind that will really change the way that you think and live your day-to-day -day life. They're really quick, easy reads. You can get through them in like a day or two, but they're really good kind of like reminders. The rest of the books in here are down here. Like I said, I just have a lot of like my spell work here. Any books, well, I guess only three. I have a spell a day, moon spells, and I think Wikipedia has a few. I also keep a lot of memoirs in here or anything like the psychic reader, attached, transitions, self-improvement. The universe has 
your back. Oh my God. Highly, highly, highly recommend this book by Gabrielle Bernstein. This changed everything. I recommend it so much. Like I should reread this book. I learned a lot. I was like underlining, annotating, highlighting every single page. The Art of Intuition and the Psychic Reader, I would also recommend. And then I just have a couple of journals down here, but I think that's it for books in here. Like really not a lot, but these are the books that I keep in my wellness room. And now moving on to the final room in the house with some books in it, my bedroom. Welcome to my bedroom. I recently did a full bedroom makeover this last summer. So if you want more details on everything in my room, what it looked like before, which was such a crazy before and after, I will say definitely check out that video. I'll link it above and down below. I'm sure by now you can tell my home is very earthy, plants, crystals, books, artwork. I think my room really highlights that. And this is also the space where I keep a lot of books that mean a lot to me, close to me. A lot of books that I loved as a teenager, collections, a lot of like more recent reads as well as my TBR. So there's a good mix in here. Let's get started. Starting over in this corner where most of my books are, we will get to this, but I want to start with this ladder style bookshelf. Starting at the bottom, I guess, I've got some books left over from my TBR a few years ago. I just haven't been at a place where I feel ready to read these. I'm a big mood reader and I just haven't been in the mood, but I do love Deepak Chopra. I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, but he has written a lot of great works in the more spiritual manifesting world. A lot of these are like just tougher reads that I haven't been in the mood for. Joan Didion, these were the last, Oh my god, not the mouse. Watch this. <clears throat> These were the last two books by Joan Didion that I hadn't owned when she passed away, so I immediately picked them up and I do want to read them. But the Places That Scare You. Let me know if your cat also plays fetch. She wants me to throw it again. <laughs> you ready? Oh, thank you. <laughs> there she goes. I read When Things Fall Apart, and this is kind of like another self-help book like that. Very spiritual, I love this. I've wanted to read this book for so long, it didn't start with you. I just haven't been in the mood really to read these books. I feel like in winter, I tend to read more text book heavy self-improvement self-help books so maybe i'll get to them this winter i will not go over this shelf this is like from my childhood i'm not religious anymore i point out this shelf because i have this beautiful beautiful complete works of william shakespeare look at this baby with the gold too so beautiful i actually used this copy for college when i took a shakespeare course because as an english major I had to take it. Now, here is another shelf. A lot of these are from like my teenage years, and to be honest, I haven't read a lot on this shelf. I've read some, but I still would love to read more. I've read Ray and Joan. I really recommend this. It's kind of like a historical take on the McDonald's fortune, but focusing on Joan. It's really, really, really good, and it just, you learn so much about McDonald's. I didn't realize that she, I think, is from St. Paul in Minnesota, so a lot of the story takes place in Minneapolis, which was cool, because I feel connected to the story. I have another copy of Jane Eyre in here. I really want to read Just Kids by Patti Smith. Yeah, some of these books I've stolen from my mother growing up. I read Manic this spring. That was okay. The Logger Queen of Minnesota I really loved. Again, I love historical takes on Minnesota because I feel so connected to it, but this follows like one of the biggest breweries and how it started in Minnesota. I love that. I think that's all I wanted to point out from this. Above it, I have my dedicated Jodi Pico shelf. I recently learned because she started a TikTok. I have been saying her name wrong all this time. The author herself on her TikTok pronounced her name Jodi Pico. And I feel so bad that I've been saying Picoult my whole life when it's Pico. She is like my first contemporary fiction writer that I have fallen in love with, read My Sister's Keeper in eighth grade, following the 10th circle, following Hand with, Handle with Care. I tried to organize it in the order that I read them all in. And then I have all the hardcovers here, but I love the way that she tells stories. I love the plot twists. I love the back and forth narration. I love how she makes you really emphasize with every single character. And there's always a big ethical or moral thing going on that makes you think. 
You got your mousy? You want me to play? You ready? Oh, my tripod. That's why you don't want to go get it. Anyway, up here, I've got a lot of pink stuff. I feel like this is a very pink girly shelf with a lot of sapphic reeds. This is one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. Side note, I tried to paint pink clouds and it kind of came out, kind of didn't, but I do love it. My mom got me this in Paris when she went to Paris a long time ago. This is for my grandmother's funeral and this is a new moon candle. But book wise, 10,000 Dreams Interpreted. I had this growing up. I stole it from my mother. And then recently, this is the updated version of 12,000 Dreams Interpreted. So I have both of these. It's funny when you notice spiritual things as a child that have followed you through adulthood like this dream book that i've had since second grade and still use like i feel like i've always been a little spiritual witch and i just had no idea a lot of books that i love are on this shelf invisible thread girls can kiss now some sapphic romance fiction here someone who will love you in all your damaged glory girl interrupted the bell jar white houses oh i love button poetry lord of the butterflies and if my body could speak were two kind of like queer collections that surprised me I didn't know they would be queer but you know I love my poetry so that was a great surprise I'm pretty sure the poet who wrote if my body could speak follows me on Instagram which I think is really cool moving up here I've got some more favorites from mostly high school Prozac Nation 13 reasons why I read in high school and loved same with perks of being a wallflower and like I've mentioned the glass castle orphan number eight was such a great historical fiction take on experimenting on orphan children which is based on a true story and it was surprisingly queer which i really really loved and then to the lighthouse which was a classic oh do i have pictures up here why did i not know that i'm so short like literally this is my pov for my eyesight i had no idea there was stuff up here it's kind of a funny story and then ordinary genius if you're a writer you will love ordinary genius it's not like a, a novel it's more of like a guide to writing so there are a lot of prompts and helpful ways to get you out of writer's block and i've written a lot of cool pieces using this as my guide the only other books on this bookshelf are way up here Joan Didion, Billy Collins, and Sylvia Plath, three amazing writers, and A Year of Magical Thinking is my favorite book by Joan Didion. Highly, highly recommend. Those are all the books on this shelf. Now, moving over here, I've got Red currently reading TBR. I will link this invisible bookshelf down below. You basically use like these brackets that you put into the wall every couple of feet. And then it looks like you have a floating bookshelf, but I love it. Whenever I finish a fiction book, I just place it on top. And eventually I want to just cover these walls in books. I'm currently working on the falling in love montage. And then this is my November, December TBR. I have to read this for book club and then I'm going to her book signing. So I wanna make sure I read that before the signing. So these are kind of like the books on deck. And then I've organized these in my own way, but these are all the books on my current TBR list. If you want more information on them, definitely watch the TBR video that I recently posted, but it just makes sense. So like this is my hopeful TBR for December, January and February. I've got a lot of like love books for February and then books that I think I'll get to in the spring. And then I have some like fall thrillers or witchy books down here that I think would work well for next fall. But we'll see. This is just my little TBR. Are you confused? I feel like the cats get really confused when I film because they don't know what I'm doing. This has nothing to do with the video either, but last night I changed out my bedding to some winter flannels of like these little yellow flowers and then this really, really soft comforter. It's so nice. The cats slept on it all night with me, which was so cute. But those are all of the books in my room. Now I almost forgot, but I also have books in the basement. So you're in for a treat because I usually never show my basement in vlogs. I don't use the space. It's just for storage. But speaking of storage, I am storing books down there. So I really thought that that was the end of the video, but then I remembered I have more books downstairs, which of course, because I was thinking like, I know I own more books, where are they? All the books, also she is my shadow. She will go everywhere I go. But a lot of like childhood books, I keep in the basement as well. And like embarrassing preteen series of books I keep downstairs, but I'll show you. So when you come back downstairs to the main level in like my entryway living room, we have my basement. This is from Urban Outfitters. I don't know if it's still available, but I love it because it does separate the basement without giving it a clunky door. Isn't she cute? 
it. Now, I don't use the basement, so it is just random storage and pieces of furniture that I don't use, but this is my basement, like I said, very random. But for books, I have a lot of saved children's books from my childhood. Stella Luna was like my favorite book growing up. So very fitting because Stella Luna literally means star moon. It's a little book about a baby bat looking for her mom. It makes sense. I feel like my interests and who I am today was literally written in the stars and like written in my childhood. There isn't a better children's book to describe me. But yeah, let me know if you recognize any of these children's books from your childhood because these are like the favorite ones that I had to hold on to. Some of them, like this one though, was my grandmother's favorite book that she held on to from the 40s. So I have some really old books, like this one was my mother's book in the 70s. And then when I was a child, I loved Our Only May Amelia. So I have some copies of that. These newer copies, were from my college child's lit class and then this I actually went to Lemony Snicket's book signing when the slippery slope came out I believe I was in like first or second grade and Lemony Snicket signed it and as a kid this was so cool it was literally like meeting a celebrity to me so I'm really glad that I still have this copy I took Spanish for like a billion years of my life growing up so here are some of the Spanish novellas that I had to read now when I said embarrassing series for my preteen years, this is what I mean. I've got the Twilight books. I've got the Pretty Little Liars series, which honestly slapped. It was so good. I love the Pretty Little Liars books. And then I have random books like Life After Life and The Nanny Diaries and Marley and Me, which just I didn't really want out upstairs. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series. Loved these as well. So they live downstairs. But I do have another random shelf here with some more books that I like this. This is my pride and joy, the Babysitter's Little Sister series. I was obsessed with these as a kid. I read them, and I mean like little, like six, seven, eight years old. I have almost every single one in this series, and I will keep these until the day I die. Like, I want to display them better, but these were so good. Like, did anybody else read these as a kid? I was obsessed. And then I also have two from the kids in Miss Coleman's class, which was like a spinoff. Is that it? I think we did it. No, I have a few more, if these count. I mean, they don't really count, but I've got my yearbooks and then all of the books from my high school. They don't count, we're not gonna look at it. Whew, I think we finally did it. That was every single book that I own, book collection, book tour, home library tour, we did it. I was going to turn this into a book tour plus reading vlog video just to include more like book content, but I don't know how long this footage is. I feel like the book tour, home library tour might be pretty lengthy. We'll see but my little horse that just galloped in here but I'll still include some more vlog clips reading clips and see what we can get I do enjoy those videos that have so much variety of content within the same subject if that makes sense and I also did want to unbox some packages that I recently got I was going to save these until I got a couple more just because I know I have some more packages that are about to arrive but I know I'm expecting a lot of packages with vlogmas season coming up I'm not doing vlogmas traditionally but I will do my best to upload as many videos as I can this month in December. So I just don't want to get too behind if I hold off and like wait for a bigger unboxing. Like I still have four packages here and then we'll just look forward to the ones that are about to arrive because I do have some really exciting packages from some pretty big companies that I love and support. It's going to be really fun to include those in some vlogs, but let's open up these packages. Fun fact, I have lost my box opener. It's like this big, so I don't know where it is, but it's definitely misplaced somewhere in my house or it's in like a coat pocket somewhere so we're using my bathroom scissors highly recommend keeping a pair of scissors in your bathroom I use these to open so many products in my bathroom that are almost empty like face lotion eye cream like whatever it is cut open the packaging and there's so much more in there so it comes in handy for sure oh oh my god Ooh, you know what I'm gonna save these. I know that's so annoying, but I got a lot of clothing pieces for this one bigger brand. I guess it's not really a secret, but for some deals, they like wanna make sure you include it in the title and give like a little lot of time. And I know that's going to take up so much time. So I'm so sorry for the tease. A very exciting lu luxury clothing haul coming up soon. Other than that, we have this box, which I already opened when I, it arrived. I am really excited for. This will definitely come in handy with reading blogs. And that is 
my candle warmer. So I have always wanted one of these candle warmer lamps. It's like a flameless way to melt candles. If you live in like an apartment or a dorm room, it's definitely a lot safer to use one of these. Oh, it's beautiful. I cannot wait to set this up. And I love the look of this. So a huge thank you to this company for sending it over. I will link everything down below for that. Next, I have no idea what this package is. Look at how this is wrapped. Is this like a limb? I'm always afraid of getting something really weird sent to me. It is so bubble wrapped. I have no idea. Oh my God. I genuinely don't know how to open this. It is so thick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers of bubble wrap just in the first bunch. And then there's another bunch of bubble wrap. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, this is really exciting. Also, Ashton, if you're watching this, I don't know if you are. I know he watches my videos, but I don't know how in depth he watches them. Don't watch this. It's gonna be a Christmas gift. I also am buying him like a lot of presents. I'm not just using things that I get sent as a gift, but I remember when I got this email, how much he would love this. So I did pick something out for him just cause I knew he would appreciate this and it kind of goes with his style. I really hope he likes this. It's like sort of his style, but I feel like it might be a little bit too either on the nose or slightly miss the mark. And no, it's not what it looks like, but doesn't this look like something? <laughs> so this company, I'll link them down below, they asked if I wanted one of their large bases, and I was like, absolutely. They sent over this beautiful blue and gold and white Ceramic, hello? Face, look at this. Ashton definitely likes a lot of like Japanese, Oriental, dragon, some of it. I mean, that's not his whole style, but a lot of the works in his tattoo studio, which I think kind of tie into like the classical, traditional tattoo style, it looks like this. So that's why I was thinking he might like this, but really pretty. Thank you to the company who sent that over. The last thing that I got in the mail is my Ipsy bag. I get this once a month. I do pay for this with my own money. I love Ipsy though. Like I will recommend them always because it's such a good deal. And I find so many new products that I've never heard of through their subscription. And it's like a little treat to myself once a month, which we love. I do pay for it annually. So with that, you get a better deal. It comes out to about $10 a month, which pays for itself, honestly, because all of the products individually are worth more than that. This is my November Ipsy bag. This is really, really soft. And I love getting these little totes because these work so well for traveling or, you know, I'll put like my tampons in here even if I'm having a sleepover. I also will use these when I am traveling in my carry-on. I use them when I'm gifting things to a friend just to put them in. And you can also redeem products using points on Ipsy and a big way to earn points. Just a little shameless plug here is if you sign up using my referral, this way we both get points. So if you want to treat yourself, do a little free trial. I don't know if they offer that, but I'm sure there's like a sign up discount. Use the link in my description box and you will receive, I believe like 18,000 points, which is more than enough to redeem free products. So I just want to say thank you to those that have signed up using my link. I want to show you what they sent me for November. This is everything that came in my November Ipsy bag. So we have this Mary and May eye cream look at how big this eye cream container is like I will use this for a while I also have this big rose hip body scrub and cleanser I love packaging that comes in this little like squeeze tube so this is nice it's a two-in-one melting body scrub with the exfoliating sugar we have grown alchemy which I love this brand so much it's a polishing facial exfoliant I have a little tart mascara it looks like I also got some lipstick, which is nice. I do love some good lipstick. Glam Glow, I love this brand. Glam Glow Super Mud. I love a good face mask. And then I got Hydrating Mist. Definitely use my link down below to get yourself an Ipsy bag. Highly recommend, it's so fun and I love getting new products to try. So I will link that down below. Those are all the packages that I have to unbox today. I feel like there's more at, my, at both of my mailboxes here and my business one. I'll just have to save it for a new vlog because I'm pretty overwhelmed with all of these anyway. Also, if you want to see something funny, when I was recording that, Marnie totally slipped inside this box. Now I feel like I can't even move it. Oh my god, she's sleeping. Okay, well now the box lives there. I am going to pick up this unboxing mess minus the box that my cat lives in now. I need to edit, but I also really want to read, especially when I put out this new bedding. Well, it's 
new to me i just switched it with like my winter flannels like look at how cute it's from target i'll see if i can link stuff down below but i do want to curl up and like read my book because look look at how cute doesn't it just go with the bedding like i want to sit here and read so bad i've been annotating this book i'm only on chapter six I've been annotating this book as well because I really like her writing. Like, she's got really good writing. So I do want to read. We'll see if I have time for that, though. I guess I'll just see you in a bit. Mm -hmm. 